So there are way too many HTML tags to review here, and I'm not going to try to expect you guys to learn every tag there is or become experts. The main core goal is to let you introduce you to how HTML works, the idea of nested tags, etc. And you should know some of the basic tags. Now one thing I can't emphasize enough, so I'm going to quit my email here so nothing weird pops up, um, is this w3schools.com website where you can go and learn about a variety of different uh, web programming languages. And here actually, not only do they have great HTML tutorials that will expand your horizons from over, far over this simple one here, but they have HTML tag references so you can look at all these different tags that are used in HTML and basically mean different things to uh, web browsers and uh, start to s understand them better. And at first it's a little intimidating, but one of the great things about this website is it actually lets you try things yourself. So you can click on all these tutorials and you can tweak things and then hit submit code and see how things change. So um, this is a great resource and I highly recommend using it. All right, but basically, long story short, a couple things you need to know about HTML uh, uh, language writing. Returns in the code don't do returns in the browser bar. So for example, if I write, I am an instructor, I live in a basement. Sorry, I'm in, it's like minus 35 degrees out right now while I record this. So, and I'm in a basement because all my kids are homesick. And so if someone bursts in shouting, I apologize. But anyway, my fingers are frozen. So I'm, I don't know, I'm just live in the moment here. All right, so if I do this and I hit save, and I then, sorry, one second, open this in a browser, notice that I hit return in the code, and, and here's the first thing, hey, it's showing up, so we finally have content in our lab exercise one title, but there's no, there's no break here, and that's because um, HTML coding doesn't recognize more than one space or, or returns in the code. So to do that, um, th there's one tag that'll be very useful to you. It's called the break tag. And the break tag is BR for break. And if we do this and save, and then open this with the finder, we'll notice that, hey, it's placed on another line. So whenever you want to break, don't hit return in your code necessarily. It doesn't matter. Uh, it helps you read it, your code better, you go for it. But that's how you create a, a, a hard break. Sometimes, though, you want kind of a more nuanced break. Uh, between between lines rather than this hard break where it's right beneath you want some spacing between it and there's another tag that you'll see all the time it's called the paragraph tag and the paragraph tag is just that it formats things as a paragraph and just like all other tag now the break tag is unique in the fact that you don't have to have a close tag because it's just a break um, there are a few tags like that but most tags, you'll want to have a closed tag. So in this case, paragraphs, you want a closed tag. And what this will do then is when this paragraph ends, it puts a space before any additional text is typed. And I could actually make put this into a paragraph tag as well. Whoops. And let's hit save and see what this does. Now we're talking. See how there's a little bit more space than there was before. So these tags, they open and close. The break tag is unique. that It doesn't have a closed thing because you're just popping it down a line. Um, they're very useful. Another thing you need to know about HTML is that tags can be nested within one another. So there are some tags um, that you can put within the paragraph. So um, I am an instructor. This I am. I like geography. That's a paragraph. Within the paragraph, maybe I want to highlight this I am or italicize it. Um, there's a tag for... Um, bolding, that's strong, and the tag for italicizing things, that's M. And then we can, uh, uh, over here, we can actually close these tags, but you want to close them in the exact same order, so M comes first, and strong comes second, or not in the exact same order, but, and so what this will do, is, just to show you what this does, is, like, you don't just have to, not everything just has to be a paragraph, or has to be, um, you know, uh, uh, bold or not bold. You can nest tags so that you can style things differently or set things apart. And so, let's see, save, open. So what I did here is, this is all one paragraph, 
But in this paragraph with these nested tags, it's both bold and italicized. So that's how HTML, the tags work. It went from this to this. All right. So those are some pretty simple tags. But the tags you're most you're going to be most interested in with web mapping, and that's the main thing. You should read up more about other tags are hyperlinks, embedding images, and then div tags. So here, what I'm going to um, talk about are uh, hyperlinks. The hyperlink is the A tag, and what's fascinating about this is uh, some tags have what are called attributes. So some tags, before you put the greater than sign uh, after the letter, you actually can put attributes that help the browser identify them or, or find some attributes about this tag to help it do things. And with a link, a hyperlink, or an email link, of course, it needs some information about where the heck am I linking to, and this is where you put it right away. So with a hyper, every hyperlink or email link you do, you're going to want to memorize this href, which I don't really know what it stands for, but I'm guessing hyperlink reference. And so you type href equals, and then the link that you want to use, you always put in quotes. So I'm, I always write both quotes at the same time, or I try to remember to, so I don't screw up and forget one. And when you're linking to a website, you always want to use HTTP colon slash slash, or if it's a secure website, HTTPS, and then link to a website. So we'll just do mealandhouse.com, because a little promotion there. And then we can close this uh, opening tag. So A is actually the tag, and the attribute is uh, hyperlink reference. Here's the hyperlink reference in a quote. What comes next is the text that you want to have to be the hyperlink. So if I wanted it to actually show the web address on the screen, I could type www.mulenhouse.com. Or if I wanted to have it be click here for more information, whatever you decide. And then like all the other tags that we've been dealing with, you need a closing tag. And in this case, it's just an A, because A is the tag, href and the website are the attribute. All right, so let's hit save and see what this does. Click here for more information. I want to show you. That's what we typed here after the link. And what this will do, notice it's underlined in purple on the website. It's going to link to this website. Ta-da! So that is how you create a link. Creating a link for an email address is not much more difficult, and it's something worth memorizing if, if you want to do this. One thing you need to be aware of is that there are web crawlers out there, so if you put your email address on a website too much, you'll be getting tons of spam for Viagra and other types of things. Um, all right, so let's do... Um, to, to create an email link, you just type mail to, colon, and again in quotes. Never want to forget that. I'll just do this now and then your address. And then you say, you can write your address or you can write email me here, please. And then again, you always want to close the tag. Now, something interesting is going to happen here. Oh my gosh, they're on the same line. Why is that? Because I didn't put a break or put these in separate paragraphs. So again, um, when you see this, it's a really easy fix. Just put br bro. Let's see. Uh, where am I? Open with Finder. And there we go. Now what the e um, email one does is if the person has a, an email program on their computer or on their mobile device, then it will automatically open that up and put your email, the email address you put here in, in there for them to email. All right. Another really important thing, let's say, uh, for, for example, in Lab Exercise 1, you're going to be creating actually uh, a portfolio of map images or images of some sort. So another thing that's really useful to know is how to embed an image. Now, this is a little trickier in the sense that images, again, the entire... World Wide Web runs on text files. However, there are image files and, and media files out there. So what you have to do is you have to tell the browser where to fetch these media files and load them from, because they're not going to be embedded within our text file. 
So let's just start with the basics here. We've got to embed an image, and the images that you can use are GIFs, GIF, JPEGs, JPG, or PNGs. Um, uh, I think it's Portable Network Graphic or something. But uh, those are the, the, the standard web images that you can use. Almost all browsers open those. Uh, PNG is a personal favorite of mine, but it's slightly larger file size. JPEGs are great. And GIFs, uh, I've never been a huge fan, but they are better in certain circumstances. You can look that up on your own. Um, image. So if we want to embed an image, it's the same idea as a link in the sense that we have to give the browser some information about where to fetch the image from. Just like with the link, the A, the A tag, we have to give it some information about where, it, which website it's going to be linking to. In this case, it's where do I get the image from. And to do that, instead of writing href, we're going to write src, which stands for source. And this is um, something that's a little more complex, so I better open this up. Let's see, desktop. You guys get to see all the stuff on my computer. That's a little unnerving, I guess. Um, let's see. Had I been better prepared. All right, so here we have, it's a good idea to always, when you're creating a website, create it in one separate folder. And to uh, have the HTML files in one folder here, and it's good practice and pretty conventional to have another folder called assets. And in the assets folder, you place all of your images. Okay, so, so here's my lab exercise one website folder. And in here, I have a couple of video, a uh, couple, sorry, a couple of web pages. Don't worry about this index one right now. I'm working in a video demo and I'm not playing with video, so I don't know why it's called that. And um, I have a folder called assets. And in here, I, I couldn't find any maps. I just dragged four pictures out of my, my pictures folder and threw them in here for examples. So if you have this, one reason it's common practice on most websites to have this assets folder is it's really easy to remember where your pictures are so you can um, tell the browser where to get them. Now the reason it's important to have them centrally located and to have all of this in one folder is this. When the, on the internet what you'll do when you actually upload this website to the internet is you'll upload all of the files in this folder to your website. And so um, from this HTML document that we're working on right now, video demo, uh, I'll, I will in the code reference this assets folder and these pictures. And you always want to keep the, the basically the tree or the hierarchy the same. So you always want to work in a folder and copy everything up um, so that the hierarchy doesn't change. If I move this assets folder to another place on my computer and I type in my code find the the assets folder and it's on the web and it can't find it because I like said it was in the C drive on my computer uh, you're gonna have serious problems so always keep your website files self-contained in one folder and then you can divvy them up into other folders uh, and assets is really a good way to keep your images and stuff uh, to know where they are all right keep it clean people now how do we actually access that folder? Well, that's a really good question. And I'm going to hit pause to rename some of these images because they're way too long for me to remember. One second. All right. So we have image, we have source, and we need to link to some um, pictures. Now, just like with the href above, what we're going to do is put this in quotes. So I'll draw both quotes here, and I'm going to close this out um, there. Now, what we're going to do is... Uh, type some information. Here's how you access that assets folder. So if your file is saved in your site folder, in the, in the main site folder, and you have another folder called assets in the same folder, to access and get into that assets folder, you type the following, period slash assets. And so that basically tells the browser where this file is located, look for a folder called assets, and dig in there. And then to access the picture, it's it's simply a matter of using the name. And I think I called it Goofy JPEG. You'll want the extension. And then uh, we will close the image out. And let's see what happens. Ta-da! Now, this picture is gargantuan. It's uh, way too big. You can resize the picture. 
uh, with with CSS, etc. In general, though, this picture uh, you wouldn't want to have this big, so you might want to resize it in a photo editor first. That's generally easier and a better way of going about this. But it proves the point, and if you hit Control or Command on a Mac, minus sign, you can at least shrink the website so you can see it, um, etc. Now, notice there's some wacky stuff going on here. Click here for more information. Huge picture. Email me here, please. Um, the reason that's happening is I didn't put a break between email me here, please, and the picture, and so it's trying to fit the picture right after email me here, please. So we need a break. And these are easy to forget, so let's do this. We'll put a... Actually, I'll embed this in a new paragraph. So we'll nest this image in a new paragraph, which will give it a little bit of spacing. Let's hit save and test it. And now it's on its own, own line. All right. I asked you guys to embed four images at least. We can do that right now. Whoops, I forgot the P here. Oh, jeez. So sue me. So um, we'll, uh, I'm not going to put these other ones in separate paragraphs, but I'm just going to do this really quickly. And why don't you guys do the same thing? can pause it, of course, if, if you need to. Another thing you can do, of course, is just copy and paste. That's a, always a nice thing about code. All right. It's always scary seeing big pictures of yourself. So there we go. That is um, how we embed photos. And because the photos are different sizes, that's how the, they basically come in as is unless you format them. And you can, if you look, go to that w3schools.com, you can see how to resize them using HTML code uh, in the attribute part of the tag. All right, I'm going to stop here. The next step will actually be to put each one of these images into their own div. And a div is a very important tag for organizing HTML content. It will be extremely important for web mapping because whenever you um, load an API map into your website, you'll want to have it in its own div. We're also going to talk about labeling divs for styling or uh, giving them IDs, I should say. Um, so uh, stay tuned. Thank you.